do my intention here tonight is not to seek to undermine the achievements and accomplishments of other peoples but to show in very real sense not only were we the creators of the Egyptian civilization but that our equality in the world the equality of the black peoples of the world is not built on any biblical fantasy or any liberal sentiment it is rooted in hard, concrete, historical realities. Right. Yeah. Diop was a particularly well accomplished man. His first career was in physics. He had worked in the most advanced nuclear lab in Europe under Frederick Julio Curie. Diop gave up physics, or really he did not give it up because he was to become director of the radiocarbon lab in Africa, the first radiocarbon lab in Africa. He didn't give it up, but he decided to use it. To use his scientific accomplishments in order to establish that Egypt was African. And when he presented his thesis, it was wrongly rejected. How absurd! How dare you say such a thing! The University of Paris rejected it. Do you know the week after he died, the first people to write me from Europe to ask for a copy of the book that was in process, Great African Thinkers, the book I edited on Sheikh Anta Diop. Who do you think wanted so desperately to get that book? And to honor him, and to buy his original manuscripts, and to house them, the University of Paris who had rejected him. Truly, as it is said in the Bible, the rejected one will become the cornerstone of the new foundation. <laughs> Far more than the linguistic arguments with the other cultural elements, there was the peculiar form of totemism. The totems of the Africans south of Egypt were the totems of the Egyptians. The cultigens, the agricultural things that we find in the pre-dynastic and dynastic Egypt comes out of the Sudanic agricultural complex, the bottle gourd, the Lagunaria Caesarea, the gossipium, the special forms of cultivated cotton gossipium herbaceum, the oil palm fruit, the tamarind fruit, the watermelon, all of these things are African. If somebody else was coming in civilizing Egypt, where are their cultigens? And then people created a pyramid building race who came into Egypt and built pyramids. Then where are their pyramids? Right. Where did this, they learn this extraordinary, you will hear something so astonishing about the pyramids. You will realize why it is that there has been so much dispute about Egypt. Because what the Egyptians did, Few of us really know how remarkable it is. The Japanese found out recently. The Japanese went to Egypt to build a pyramid. The Japanese took all the conventional wisdom that we had about the Egyptians that had been passed on to us, how they had handmade tools. They were not in the high technology range that we are today. So they built the finest handmade tools to cut the stone that Egyptians cut. Couldn't cut it. <laughs> they improved it, couldn't cut it. Then they took air jackhammers, high modern technology to cut the stone. And then they came to the second stage. Now we've used high technology, modern technology to cut the stone because nothing that we thought could cut stone like that couldn't cut the stone. Diop had made that quite clear. That when they found iron, smelted iron, near the pyramids, they said it had fallen through a crack in the earth. It didn't belong to the pyramid age. <laughs> that iron smelting was to come much later from the Hittites who passed it on to the Syrians. Even I believed that. All of us believed that until Diop showed scientifically it is not true. These people had gone into high advanced iron smelting in the pyramid age they could not cut those things with bronze tools 
So they use air jackhammer. So then they come to the next problem. They saw all of these pictures and every Egyptologist had said how these Egyptians would have a lot of labor and they would move these big things and put it on the barges. The Japanese tried to put them on the barges. The barges capsized. <laughs> so they had to use steamboats. Jumping straight back into high technology, they used steamboats. So then they got it down the steamboats and they got down to the desert. Now you have to lift it and put it in the desert and erect it. When they took the stone off the steamboat, it sank in the mud. When they dragged it out of the mud, it sank in the sand. So they got cranes. The cranes broke. Then they got, then they got better cranes. And they lifted it up and then comes the problem. Put it now in alignment like the great Egyptians. The Egyptians put those stones in such an alignment they are one one thousandth of an inch. Accuracy. The only people on earth today who achieve that accuracy are opticians cutting glass. That is how they move that stone. That is how they cut that stone. The Japanese started to use helicopters. So they used air jackhammers. Instead of the so-called primitive tools or handmade tools or bronze tools and then they use steamboats instead of the barges and then they use cranes instead of all of these big human masses of human labor they thought the Egyptians were using and then they used helicopters and then they decided they had to let it go. They couldn't do it. <laughs> and they were not using 50 ton blocks which the Egyptians put at the top of their skyscrapers they were using two ton blocks of stone and they couldn't do it. So make no mistake you are dealing with extraordinary people. Because the next myth coming up in the 21st century is how the Japanese are the superior people of the world. It's going to shift from the European to the Asiatic. So get it quite clear. In the very early stages of civilization, something very unusual happened. I was with my wife in Egypt last summer and we went to Aswan. And I looked at the block, an obelisk, a stone obelisk which had been cut many centuries ago. And I looked at the way it had been cut, the perfection of the cut. I looked at the stone and I wondered why they had abandoned this obelisk. They abandoned it, they said, because it had a flaw. And I looked carefully, it is true, my eyes are not what they used to be. I could not see this flaw, so I used my hands, which are extremely sensitive. And it had to be pointed out to me where the flaw was and it was very clear to me it would have taken centuries for that flaw to really make a difference. But our people didn't play around with things. It had to be perfect. When the Japanese were building the pyramid, when they tried to put the stones in alignment, they cracked and broke and were badly scratched. When they went to check the stones that the Egyptians had put into alignment, one one thousandth of an inch accurate, not a single stone was scratched or cracked. You are dealing with people who felt you had to be as perfect as possible. Let us pray that those of us, our people who learn of their heritage, their ancestors, will not accept mediocrity as their standards.